Hello, it's Metacosis Perfectionatus, where medicine and chemistry make perfect sense. Welcome back to my general chemistry quick review playlist. In the previous videos, we had an introduction. I taught you how to answer chemistry questions, how to read graphs to understand the difference between directly related and inversely related entities. And in the last video, we talked about significant figures. Today, we'll talk about rounding of significant figures and how a scientific notation is written. Spoiler alert, it's written like this, m times 10 power something. This is called the base and this is called the exponent or the power or the index. Please watch the videos in this general chemistry quick review playlist in order. Let's start by answering the question in the previous video. These questions in this playlist go in series. So you'll find the first two questions in the first video and then question three in the video after this, etc., etc. Can you round this number to three significant figures? Please pause and try to answer this yourself. First, I'll show you how a doofus student will answer it and then I will tell you how an excellent student answers this. First, the doofus way. Oh, okay, I know that here we have six significant figures. That's right. And they just want three, so I'll just take these three and write them down right here. That's a big, humongous doofus. And why is that? Because 565,212 is not the same as 565. If you were so rich and you had a Rolls Royce and that was the price of the Rolls Royce and someone agreed to take your Rolls Royce for $565, you will be very upset, won't you? Because 565 is not the same as 565,212. So that's a wrong answer. What's the correct answer? 565, these are the three significant figures. I am not done yet, zero, zero, zero. Oh yeah, now that's close enough to 565,212. But hey, Medicosis, how many significant figures do we have here? Only three significant figures, because remember, in the last video we said that the trailing zeros are not significant. Try this question then. Round this number to three significant figures. Okay, now, 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 Medicosis, don't, don't worry. I'll get this right this time. 565, and I will add my three zeros. Still a doofus. Because look at this number that you ignored. It's a seven. Five and up, you round up. Since the seven is larger than five, or five and higher, you round up. You write five, six, and not five, but you round the five upwards. It becomes five, six, six, zero, zero, zero. That's how you do it. So some pearls for the pros, how to round off. Find the digit immediately to the right of the last significant figures. In the last example, it was seven, which is higher than five. Five and up, you round up. Four and down, you round down, i.e. leave alone. So here's the same example again. Look at this, we want three significant figures. You look to the number immediately to the right of the last significant figure, so it's a two. Is it five and up or four and down? Oh, it's four and down, it's four and below. So you leave the five alone. You do not round it up to six, just leave it alone. And the answer will be five, six, five, and your lovely three zeros, which are not significant. But look at this, they want three significant figures. Look to the one just after, to the right, seven. Oh, I round up. So this five should be written as six and the answer is five, six, six and the three zeros. And here I have only three significant figures. Try this one, 5,657,232. Please round that to three significant figures. Pause and try to answer this yourself. So let's write that down, five, six, five. These are my three significant figures. But look what came after the five seven, which means this five is not true. I need to round it up. So it becometh a six, five, six, six. And then what? The rest of them are zeros like this. They want three significant figures. I gave them three significant figures. A pearl for the pros. Give your final answer in the least number of significant figures possible. The least that you can get away with. Let's try some examples. 1.2 centimeters times 1.6 centimeters. Can you multiply 
and give me your answer in the proper amount or the proper number of significant figures. Let's go. First, do the math. 1.2 times 1.6, whatever method of multiplication you use, I don't care. The answer is 1.92, but we gotta pay close attention to the units. Units are extremely important. They can make you or they can break you. Centimeter times centimeter is centimeter squared, not just centimeter. Okay, so the final answer is 1.92 centimeter squares. Am I done yet? No, because how many significant figures are here? Two significant figures. And how many significant figures are here? Also two significant figures. And how many significant figures are here? Three, so that's not a proper answer. I need to give my final answer in the least number of significant figures I can get away with. This is two, this is two, the lowest number here is two. So I need to round this to two significant figures. Can you do it? Sure, it's 1.9. Because the two is less than five, I leave the nine alone. And it becometh 1.9 centimeters squared. That's the answer. Try this one next. 1.2 centimeter times 1.62 centimeters. Do the math. Here is what I got. 1.944 centimeters squared. Am I done yet? No. Here I have two significant figures. And here we have three significant figures. What's the least number of significant figures I can get away with? Two. So I need to round this into two significant figures. It becometh 1.9 centimeter squared. Another question for you. Can you round this number to one decimal place? I did not say one significant figure. I said one decimal place. Please pause and try to answer this yourself. So here is my 24. Here is a decimal. I need one decimal place. Oh, eight. I should write this down. No, uh -uh. Look to the right. Nine, five and up. You round up. So it becometh 24.9. Yet another question. Round this crazy number to three significant figures. So here is one, here is two, here is three. Look after, it's five. I round up. It becometh 3.35. So this lovely number right here, if you round to three significant figures, becomes 3.35, correct? Yeah. But how about 3.45? There is a crucial difference between these numbers. Here the 5 is followed by many digits, so you round up always, no exceptions. However, here the 5 is not followed by anything. If you want to round this number to two significant figures, well, some people say that you gotta go this way, others will say that you gotta go this way. So it's the tie-breaking rule. And you need to ask your professor or teacher which one is going to be used on the exam. Should I go up and round up 3.5 or should I leave it as 3.4? Why do people disagree? Because some people say, well, just you round up like you always did because it's a five. So you round up always so this becomes 3.5 instead of four. So they call it the 5-4 rule. Nothing unique here. Other scientists argue well, if something measures 3.45, it's not fair for the 45 to become 50 all of a sudden. It's not, because 45 is not necessarily 50. I think this even number is cool, so they keep the even number, which is the 4, so it's called round half to even method. Ask your teacher which method is going to be used on the exam, which one is required of you. Personally, I don't care. Let's go. Can you round this number to two significant figures? So I need this and I need this. Look after, it's a five. So you round up. Oh yeah, it's 24. Ha <laughs> ha, that's easy. That's a doofus right here. Because 2,352 is far, 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 far from 24. You need to add two non-significant zeros after. That's close enough. Yet another question. How many significant figures do we have here? Easy. All of them are significant. All the non-zero digits are significant. So we have four significant figures. Can you round 13.3 to one significant figure? Oh yeah, I just take the first one and it becomes one. Doofus. You want to reduce 13.3 to one? You want to give your answer as one, one thirteenth of the original number? That's crazy. It's like going from 100% to 8%. That's crazy. Instead, you should write the one. However, do not stop there. Give me something not significant, like this. And now to the ultimatum, the ultimate question. Here is 0 0.012345. I want you to round this to one significant figure and write the answer here. Then round the same number to two significant figures. Try three. How about four significant figures? How about five, six, and seven? Please pause, get a piece of paper, and try to answer all of them yourself. 
Are you ready for the answers? Are you sure? Let's go. When you round to one significant figure, please remember that the leading zeros are not significant. So these zeros do not count. So I will just write them here, but they do not count. I still have no significant figures and they want one. So take the next one, which is one. So that's the answer. The zero is not significant. The zero is not significant. This one is significant. So it's true. I have one significant figure here. Next, try to round this into two significant figures. Zero is not significant. Zero is not significant. So I have not started counting yet. Now let's start counting two significant figures. Here is one and here is two. There you go. Be careful. Look at the one after the two. It's three. Okay, you do not round up. You leave the two alone. Okay, next three significant figures. It's easy now. The zero does not count. The zero does not count. Here is one. Here is two. Here is three. Look after. It's four. Do I round the three up? No. You leave alone. Awesome. How about next? Let's round to four significant figures. Zero does not count. Zero does not count. Let's start counting. Here is one, two, three, and four. Look after it. It's a five. So it becomes a five if you're using that five, four rule, or you can leave it as a four if you're using the even rule. Ask your teacher. So this could be 0 0.01235 or 0 0.01234. Both answers are correct depending on the methodology. Next, let's round to five significant figures. The zero does not count. The zero does not count. Let's start counting. One, two, three, four, and five. And we are satisfied. Next, they want six significant figures. 0 0.01234. Four, five, but they want six. You add a zero. Is this significant? Yeah, when you write it like this and you put the zero, I'm assuming that this is measured, not estimated. So yeah, it is significant. How about seven significant figures? Same idea, 0 0.01, 2, 3, 4, 5. I still need two significant figures, two more. Add two zeros. The decimal point and the fact that this is measured and not estimated makes these zeros significant. We're done with the first part of the video, which is rounding of significant figures or rounding to a certain number of significant figures. Now let's talk about scientific notation. How to write a number in a scientific notation? It is written like this. M times 10 as a base power x, the exponent or the power or the index could be a positive number or negative number. The base in this situation is always 10. As for the m, it's a number that is greater than 1 and less than 10. But hey, Metacosis, what if my final answer was 0 0.12 times 10 to the third power? Well, remember, the m cannot be like this. The m has to be greater than 1. So you just kick this decimal point one inch forwards to the right. So it becometh 1.2. And since you kicked it to the right, i.e. you increase this, you have to decrease the exponent by one. So it becometh like this. This is a proper scientific notation, but this is improper. Let's try something cool. Here is 1.2 times 10 to the second power. And here is 3.5 times 10 to the second power. Can you multiply these two entities together? Sure. First, look at the m. Multiply the m's first. 1.2 times 3.5 is 4.2. Amazing. Multiply that by the base is always 10. What do I do to the powers when I'm multiplying? You add the exponents. So 2 plus 2 is 4. It's 4.2 times 10's power 4. Am I done? Well, not yet. How many significant figures here? Two. How about here? Two. Okay. Therefore, the answer has to be two significant figures. Here I have two significant figures. My answer is final. Now you can understand why we can use many different methods to explain the same number. I can write this number here. As you know, when I add this over line or over bar, I'm telling the reader, hey, look carefully, this is the last significant figure. This is the last measure one. Everything after it is estimated, guessed. So it's one, two, three, four, five significant figures. Or I can write all of this and tell the reader, hey, only five significant figures. So significant, 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 but then the last two are not significant. Same thing as before, it's the same exact concept. Or if you just want five significant figures, I can write this in the proper scientific notation. Look, one, two, three, four, but I need five. I add a zero, this one is significant. 
because this one is measured. And then I say to myself, I need to multiply by a base, which is always 10, and an exponent. This is 1,234,000. It's 1,000,000. 1 million. One million. Oh, six zeros, exactly. If you're not convinced, just kick that six curves or six inches, six steps. One, two, three, four, five, six. You will add two zeros here. It's the exact same number. Another question. Can you add 52.36 to 0 0.3571 and report your result in the appropriate number of significant figures? Yet another question. Multiply this number, meters, times this number, also meters, and report your result in the appropriate number of significant figures. Let me know the answer to the last two questions, 34 and 35, in the comments. You will find the answer key in the next video when we talk about dimensional analysis. Are you struggling with pharmacology? If these graphs are driving you crazy, it's time to master them once and for all. Download my general pharmacology course at medicosisperfectionalist.com so that you can understand pharmacology, so that you can help your patient. I have more than 1,400 free videos on this channel, plus 300 premium videos that are only available for members who join my highest tier. Click the join button or the link in the description to join my YouTube membership program. Choose the highest tier. You will gain instant access to more than 300 premium videos. Please subscribe, hit the bell, smash like, support my channel here or here. Go to my website to download my courses, notes, and cases. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.